Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching Rush Hour with me, Sumita Kareer. Over the next 30 minutes, we will go over the day's top stories and, of course, looking forward into the new week, the developments that are shaping up news. But uh, first, uh, uh, let's uh, go across uh, to our top story. In fact, IT majors TCS, Infosys and Wipro have declared the Q4 results while TCS displayed resilient performance and Wipro also beat Street's estimates. Infosys has delivered a miss on all counts. To understand what these numbers really hold and what does it really mean for the sector, I have with me Sandeep Agarwal, a fund manager at Sovilo Investment Managers. Thanks very much, Sandeep, uh, for joining us this evening on ET. Now, I, I, I want to understand uh, your thoughts on, on muted expectations Expectations are from the IT sector, considering largely a weak set of earnings amidst a weak discretionary demand. What do you really make of IT going forward? Is is the demand environment really expected to see a reversal in H2? Yeah, hi, uh, good evening, and thanks for having me on the show. So you know uh, we are into IT services, so which is which always comes after the product or the software has been sold. So there is a demand which will come with a lag effect. So uh, if you see the last 25, 26 years of cycle, I have been tracking this sector for now more than 20 years. Always uh, we see first the uh, first the innovators or the people who are making the product, the tech, big techs which make the product or the software product or the hardware, they are the bigger beneficiaries of the demand and then followed by the service providers. So we are service providers, we always get impacted with a lag effect and we also get benefited after a lag effect. So I think same like 2021 when you know covid hit us bad in january february everyone was talking negative and then march everyone started revising guidance upward and we had a massive rally till end of 2021 similarly i think right now that we are at at the at the fag end where you know we our we are still getting impacted due to lack of spend which happened three four quarters back in the front runner of the big techs in the us and now those companies have started reporting better numbers we have seen nasdaq making new high all the even a stock like Microsoft is up more than 70% in a year's time. So now we will see demand coming our way also. But uh, remember that, you know, uh, this is a B2B business. So if any company see a lot of churn in their top leadership during these tough times, which generally happen, then the recovery in those companies will be uh, will, will be very difficult. Uh, but the companies which have steady ship in terms of management, those companies will suddenly see good demand environment, good deal wins, and they will recover much faster and will generate better returns. So you are saying that uh, a, a reversal of sorts of the fortunes of uh, these uh, tech companies, IT companies, uh, is of course inside. But I want to understand from you, Sandeep, how soon is a reversal expected, and how much how much of a contribution will a generative AI then make? Because uh, we heard Infosys' Saral Parikh really uh, being very very upbeat as far as AI is concerned. He mentioned that uh, they they will see a lot of action as far as generative AI is concerned. So, you know, th this is the way to look at the sector. Whenever a new technology comes in, then, you know, uh, the we are since we are service provider, we have to uh, service our existing clients and we have to also train our people in the new technology and the proportion of the people in the beginning whom we can train because of lack of availability of talent to train those people is less. It picks up slowly and then once it starts, uh, you know, picking up pace, the same thing happened. We have seen in every cycle, we have seen this in IMS, we have seen this in cloud, we have seen this in digital and now generative AI will, can't be any different. So, you know, next three, four quarters, we will take more, more time to, you know, reach 60, 70 or 80 percent of the workforce to be trained in the generative AI side. Uh, while Accenture has already reached a substantial number, we will take some more time. And once that happens, then, you know, we can also execute those large deals which are coming in the space. So my view is that uh, we will see a big jump, maybe a quarter or two later. But remember that, you know, because we are service providers, our returns or our growth uh, surprise will be limited. This sector, you know, is priced to perfection. So our 25, 50 bips beat on either side or downside or upside or uh, is enough to, you know, move the stocks in either direction. And, and, and the only thing which surprises here is the earnings. So if earnings surprises, the stocks goes up to that extent. In my view, we will see some surprises in next one or two quarter because attrition has bottomed all, uh, is, is coming down very fast and uh, it helps the margin in a big way. So we'll see uh, earnings led recovery then followed by uh, good revenue growth. So I would say that next quarter again, you will see beat in margins and then followed by revenue growth in the coming quarters. 
Right, so you're saying in a quarter or two, we should see a reversal of sorts coming in from the IT sector. But Sandeep, with new fears generating around inflation coming back, there's also an escalation of the ongoing war that's happening in the Middle East. Uh, does Do these developments really worry you or are these only limited to a near term? See, these developments, these are something which starts in a small way and then, you know, they can take a bad shape. So just to give you uh, some example of the past, the Russia-Ukraine war started uh, and then no one was uh, able to make out what was the impact. But we saw EPAM doing a nose dive because most of their workforce was say, from Ukraine and that geography and that got very badly impacted and the stock so massive, massive, massive market cap erosion. So it is very difficult to, you know, today uh, say what will happen, although in Israel and Iran, in that region, I think only in Israel there is some workforce which is there for all the tech measures. But in Iran, no one has any big impact. But what will be the impact, cascading impact of that and all those things? Whether the client will stop their discretionary budget, uh, the economics will, what kind of turn the economics will take? What will be the impact on the crude? These are very difficult to say. But uh, let me put it this way: this IT services is something which you need to do whatever you have spent. You, if you want to use those products or services. You need to have annual maintenance contracts, you need to have IMS contracts, and also the impact on this will be less. But since they are always priced to perfection, the price earning multiple uh, uh, gets corrected very, very quickly. So war doesn't help anyone and every no sector is immune except the defense, maybe. So I would not say that if, if the situation escalates, this sector will be immune to that. But I believe that in fundamental terms, in number terms, the impact will be less. All right. So in fundamental terms, you're saying that the impact will be less, although an impact of a geopolitical uh, event and its ramifications, of course, is spread across sectors. But Sandeep, I also want to understand from you, and this is what analysts are saying, that a broader increase uh, in spending, at least as far as IT is concerned, is also expected due to U.S. elections that are uh, due in November. Um, what is your take on that? That Does that really give some room uh, to raise hopes as far as IT is concerned, besides, of course, the other factors? So yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, this all the new tech companies are talking very positive. There is corporate tax cut, which people are expecting going into the election and any of those kind of measures. Then you know those additional spend do help in allocating more budgets to tech. And uh, we are such a small piece of the overall tech budgets that even a small change there of 25, 50 basis point can make a big change. Because remember, all the incremental money which is allocated generally finds its way to the best, most efficient and cheapest geographies to execute. So from that perspective, we always have an ad advantage. So I think uh, to that extent, we will be bigger beneficiaries going into elections. But also with it comes some rhetoric of, uh, of localization and all that. We don't know if that fear comes first or the growth comes first. So if the fear of localization comes first, then the stocks can in fact uh, go down first before they go up. So, so that that risk is always there. <laughs> Right, Sandeep. And I have to ask you this question as far as jobs are concerned, considering that, you know, this has been a big theme across, uh, you know, the past few quarters. Uh, you also mentioned the point about attrition coming down sequentially and coming down uh, gradually. Uh, what is your overall assessment of whether jobs and how much uh, of an uptick will be seen in IT related jobs? Because uh, let me quote, uh, let me quote a research specialist staff, uh, staffing firm Xfino here. They've warned of a 40 to 50 percent drop in hiring as far as IT is concerned. What's your take on that? So uh, it, it is factually correct. And, you know, we have seen in every cycle when growth doesn't come, the IT, IT companies stop uh, aggressive hiring. And because there is a natural attrition of between 14 to 20 percent, uh, if you don't replace it with a bigger number, there'll be a fall in net headcount. But this is a, something which has been happening for last 25 years, honestly. And uh, and, and I think there is no perfect way to manage this, and that's the reason that at the at the bottom of the cycle, uh, the, the the bench is also at the bottom, and the manpower is also at the bottom. And suddenly, when demand moves up, everyone goes chasing those limited manpower which is available, and ends up hitting the margins very badly. So today, we are seeing bottom of attrition, which suggests that there is very less demand for the people. If suddenly, you know, for a billion or one and a half billion dollar of contract gets awarded to the whole Indian IT industry in the large cap name, it will mean substantial number of people required suddenly and that those number of people may not be immediately available because what is available is fresher workforce, not the experienced workforce. So everyone starts booing each other's 
manpower and that leads to sharp jump in wage and that goes and impacts the margin. So this cycle always goes on. You have the least number of people at the bottom of cycle because you want to be in the margin band which you have guided for. And then if suddenly demand comes, it comes and hits you very hard on the margin fund. So we have seen this seven or eight times in last 22 years. So this is not something new. But my view is that we should take some hit in our books in terms of margin and always have a decent bench because if you have a decent bench, then the chances of those impact is is little bit controlled, contained. So very difficult to you know project when that will play out. But let me put it this way. I don't think that our growth will further go downhill from here because one more reason is that first half generally for Indian IT services is very good. So you are getting into uh, quarter one and quarter two, which will be better than what you have seen in the last two quarters. So in that period, if your network force is negative, it may hurt you uh, uh, from, from margin perspective. All right, so you're saying that, uh, of course, uh, the worst is over as far as the IT sector is concerned and quarter one and quarter two are going to be great. One final question uh, from you, Sandeep, before we let you go. Now, Nifty IT is down over 4% this week. Uh, you know, uh, keeping in mind all that's been happening and keeping in mind your projections for the IT sector, what are you recommending to investors? So, so we run a PMS, so it is very difficult to uh, recommend any specific stock, but let me put it this way, in the large caps where where there is no challenge in the leadership and where there is things are just getting impacted due to industry phenomena like HCL or uh, TCS, I think there uh, is scope for making some decent return 10-15% in next 6, six to 12 months. Uh, where there is a leadership issue or there is some challenge on the leadership side, there is attrition at the top level, those names should be lesser preferred or less preferred over the names where the ships are steady and the valuations have gone through time correction. As I mentioned, both the names TCS, HCL, uh, I think that should be preferred. Also, uh, uh, what has happened interestingly is that some of the very small caps have become decent mid cap, or I would say they would be called uh, large cap if they were in 2011, uh, because their market cap is now of that size, although the, la the, the, the large cap of those times have become very large now, so they look like mid cap, but those are the names where if you have comfortable valuation likes of Coforge, uh, I think, you know, growth will be better in the in the good quality mid caps. So if you are getting them at, in, at decent valuation, they can also be looked at. But I would today prefer a large cap over mid cap because the valuation of mid caps are very high except some pockets. All right. Thank you very much, Sandeep, for uh, sharing your thoughts uh, with us this evening on ET. Now, so Sandeep Agarwal over there, fund manager of Sovilo Investment Managers, uh, presenting a rather bullish stance as far as the Indian IT sector is uh, concerned, of course. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.